Um, good morning. Thanks for inviting me to this nice congress. A talk on uh, reflections and on the optical quali qualities, especially in how to materialize them. Um, four topics. Um, at the moment, many facades are blurred, um, which in many cases is a good thing. However, many opportunities are lost that way, so I'll, I will focus on how to improve that uh, later on. I will talk about the, uh, the optical effects uh, that can be achieved, because why improve the, the reflections if you don't know what will come out of it? It, it must be a tool of the designer. And then uh, how to, to um, make them, how to materialize them. For most buildings, uh, it's hardly necessary to, uh, to stop the blurring. One doesn't see it uh, on the high facades that only reflect the clouds. Um, in the cold bent versions we just saw, one doesn't see uh, any of the curve, curvature of the glass either because it, uh, it had uh, patterns on it, uh, screen printed dots. However, when things get highly reflective, uh, uh, the demands get higher. Also, well, if the uh, structures are in front of the facade, one hardly sees the, the differences, uh, the distortions uh, by the, um, the, the, the wrong curving of the glass. So, well, why improve it? Why spend a lot of money on it? Um, in some cases it's uh, very good even, like here the, the, the Bank of Dubai, it's a beautiful project and it kind of abstra abstracts, uh, abstracts the, uh, into a horizontal lining of the, the, uh, the scenery without uh, reflecting exactly what is, uh, one cannot discern what is exactly to be seen on the, the upside of the river or on the river which uh, can be a quality. Um, the lower parts of the building are very transparent, don't hardly reflect, so one doesn't see any blur in there, and only the, the upper part, the upper facade, uh, will be reflective. It's a very good solution to um, avoid uh, blurring that may be uh, uncomfortable to see. Also, why make uh, your building into uh, a billboard for the, for the neighbors or for your uh, competitor? It's better to blur him and just uh, use him as an uh, illustration or as a variation on your facade. Um, and there are, of course, the, the gains uh, in the urban planning that by reflecting each other, a kind of unity uh, emerges between the building. Um, and also the problem, uh, if one would have perfect uh, reflections and just flat facades, uh, one wouldn't see the, the building at all anymore. One would more or less look through it, which is not quite the uh, image uh, many firms uh, would, would want, I think. One would only see the, the opposite of the road. Sometimes, however, uh, there's a very nice uh, building opposite the road, a cathedral, but even then, it's better not just to copy it, because uh, the owner of the building is not uh, the cathedral, right? then you'd better blur it and just uh, fragment it and, and use it as an illustration for yourself. Um, this uh, was in Houston. Passing through a street, the building moves with you uh, if, if one passes there by car. Well, why, what is uh, the extra value of having a perfect reflection here? It, uh, it's nice seeing the yeah, kind of uh, wave, small ripples on, on the water that the building uh, resembles. Or looking from the high at the uh, Regency uh, restaurant. It, uh, blurring yeah. can have its uh, attractive points. Um, also other Effects may be used, of course, um, like uh, introducing different colors or, uh, or lining in the facade, and then the blurring will just uh, make one big surface again, which can be used in a composition. 
having uh, made perfect reflective surfaces doesn't mean that it uh, really has added uh, value either. For example, in the spa building, uh, the glass is very perfect, but it's hardly recognizable as a transformation of, of the surrounding, because there's a global part which continues to the uh, horizontal parts or the cylindrical parts in non-recognizable reflections. Or, like the middle one, they're just reflecting a very complex uh, grid, which doesn't have any ad added value either, because one doesn't en un understand anything of the grid <coughs> behind it anyway. Um, or if one makes, does make a reflective facade and tries to show the long lines and they're not correctly done, then they're not, well, an added value either. It just shows it's a bad, uh, um, well, they don't really uh, command the technology. So it must be very long lines to understand what is uh, happening and the, 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 cur the reflections must be really of high quality. Um, curves, uh, facades are, however, coming up more and more, especially in big buildings. Uh, the, the economic um, added value is big because with just a little bit of uh, extra facade, uh, a lot of uh, floor space can be added. And uh, of course, uh, technology is improving, and people will always order the best quality available for a reasonable price. I'm a bit amazed that many buildings here in Chicago, even new ones, have such bad reflections, actually. Um, for in the uh, in car industry, who would still buy a car with uh, bad uh, reflections on the glass? Twenty years ago one would accept it, but nowadays uh, one wouldn't think of it. It's not distinct. And uh, the same for the, the metal work, of course, of the car. So, the smoothness can uh, make it uh, much more much more luxurious and it has uh, very clear qualities. It demonstrates control of uh, technology and uh, therefore visualizes economic power. It can add identity, not always a good identity. Um, shaping in curved lines is even more difficult than with uh, rectangular shapes and things, so not everything that will come up will be good. But uh, perfect uh, material, perfect smoothness can, uh, can add both in uh, flat surfaces and in curved surfaces and extra billion. If the twist is only very slight, like in this, uh, the, uh, it's only a design proposal, I think, uh, in the Hype Tower, one hardly sees the improvement, the, the reflection actually, or the distortion of the facade. So. It's hardly worthwhile twisting the glass there for a lot of money. Actually, it's, it's only on the aerial view that one will see just these uh, reflections because standing low and with the... Oh, it is a forward uh, inclined facade, so one would see some reflection that, of course, if the twist is uh, much bigger, then the effects become much bigger too. We are more clear. Um, just a few optical effects. Um, to, to make it easier to visualize uh, what will happen in a design or just looking at any uh, reflective shape. If one uh, looks at a shape and um, draws a horizontal, uh, sorry, a vertical surface directly at the, at the building, um, the intersection line it either inclines forward or backward and thus uh, will uh, transform the a horizon upward or downward, that's the easiest uh, rule, I think, in this. And uh, towards the side, if the, if the, yeah, the, refle the, the lines will get closer, if, if the reflections get, uh, the change of reflection angle changes quicker, then the transforming will get quicker too. This uh, would be of a ground level, typical view of a uh, um, cylindrical or forward thing. Kind of um, effects get a bit more complicated uh, as the volumes get more complicated. Again, uh, the 
the inclining side sideway inclining cylinder if you would uh, intersect it with the vertical surface on the left side uh, the line would be inclining um, backward whereas on the right side uh, forward so that besides upon the transformer this was a design by Calatrava I think about two years old just the design I don't think it will be executed um, well the the narrowing of the the, the reflections is very clear here of the, in the middle tower for example the towers on the two sides they are hardly visible they're just a black line here what I very much like it's just uh, it's a different aspect I think the tower on the left um, they took he took there the, the point of gravity um, as a uh, vertical uh, on the vertical rotation line and therefore the whole tower seems to uh, uh, twist a bit and or it's, it's moving like a poker more or less of course nice detail um, ellipsoid is uh, another shape we will often see and these would be the effects uh, for example on the Swiss reinsurance when uh, the surroundings are very complex it, uh, the transforming of the surrounding becomes even uh, well, very complex too and transforming it will hardly be visible I think but clearly they like to show it if they put it on their presentation photograph and there are many more uh, the, like the mad uh, tower mad designed uh, tower on the right there are many more designs uh, where it will be coming up, the uh, reflections, and it can be an uh, added value. I just saw this, this proposal is uh, triangulated, the right. On the twisted facade, the shaping, the transforming will become more complex. Here on a horizontal line, um, it is curving backward, whereas uh, the the line upward in the middle will be inclining forward so uh, there are two different effects one will make the horizon curve upward whereas the backward curving uh, horizontal intersection will double actually and stretch the, the reflection can be seen here in the in the beam of course um, here the reflection curve when when intersected, it's um, bending backward. Uh, also, line will bend uh, downward, so it's curving upward. And one of the and here it will be the double curvature with the uh, opposing uh, curvatures. So the image will be both uh, split up and stretched. And very uh, important is having a grid to. Um, tra transform a grid to have any knowledge of what is actually happening otherwise it would be much harder to, to understand what is happening and I think in fact uh, Geary took this as an inspiration for making the, the tube, tubal grid uh, over the grass fields in fact one is walking under it uh, inside the bean or actually there are even the, uh, the shadows when the sun is shining uh, of the grid on the grass again, so it, it's uh, it's a play with uh, the concept of the beam. Also, Geary is always reacting, very much reacting to buildings and effects in the surrounding, like the the curving figures uh, over the beam on this uh, scene from this direction. They are uh, receiving or open to the beam, whereas the other ones above the entrance to the building are upward. So first he takes up the beam to get closer and then he connects um, to the high buildings in the background. But I think Geary very often makes very understandable effects. Um, well, the thing next is how to uh, materialize such facades. It has uh, uh, parallel aspects like uh, those of Mark Zobeck. Um, first of all, it's uh, very important. There are many 
aspects uh, that influence the regularity of a glass panel or of a facade. And it's no use spending uh, lots of money on just one aspect if uh, it har is hardly of any influence on all the others. However, the best quality should be uh, demanded, not always is of course, but then the uh, movement will be um, a selling argument. Um, well, there's the, the framing system. The framing must follow the, the, cur the curvature as uh, required, as the architect would like it, um, which implies that the frames must be curved, which is not the nicest thing to do, of course. Um, and then they can be shaped at point. That's somewhat easier, I would think. This is, in short, the problem if one would make a high bar shape twisted um, facade. It uh, has a very uh, connecting angle of the of the transom or of the mullions also to the structure. An uh, aluminium profile is very hard to transform, so uh, if not impossible actually. And then there are so many parts that it's a horrible thing and practically economically not feasible. And it would in imply very much uh, measuring. If one would have uh, two millions to connect to a floor, and normally in an office building, um, millions and framing is uh, sound and uh, fireproofing, then this would have to be a solution in the conventional way, which is not feasible really. Um, that's why I thought out this uh, new system, which I elaborated with Alcoa, a Kaunier. Um, it's based on uh, a split uh, profile. It has one backing profile that's uh, rid structurally rigid and um, gives uh, the support, and uh, which connects always, well, for example, at the right angle, parallel to the superstructure, can be put under different varying angles, of course, but uh, connecting to an orthogonal system would be the most uh, logic thing to do. And then there's a glazing profile which can be twisted by hand. Uh, for a large build, especially it's just twisting a few degrees on, uh, on a floor height, it's no problem. Um, this then would be the new scheme of connecting it to a wall or to a column. One can see how it uh, twists, the glazing profile twists along the mullion. And in this case, it uh, actually is twisting 18 degrees for, um, for two meters, with, uh, for one meter, sorry. Which implies that in five meters it would be completely flat. That's much too much, of course, for especially a high rise building. But it um, shows uh, better the, the qualities for a Shuro model. model. And we made an opening window in it. It's freely curved facade. Um, one can see it's uh, freely curved because the bottom line is straight. Up. Um, transom are have a radius of four meter. Um, all corner connections basically are the same for um, twisted or for freely curved uh, surfaces. A twisted surface. It's made of rules which are moved. A rule is a straight line, rotated compared to the neighboring uh, line. Um, so it does, um, in, the, in the corner connections, they're all the same, actually. Uh, twisted and uh, freely curved. Um, it is nice for the opening window that the hinges must be uh, aligned, of course, otherwise can, one can only open it once and then. Um, the hinges, they are parametrically designed because they, they go yeah, slightly diagonally across the, the, the window from bottom to top and then they don't follow, of course, the curved line of the glass but uh, make a straight line, which is not very hard to, uh, to draw. And it must be milled uh, to produce them in big numbers. Um, the, the curving of the, the twisting of the profiles is, of course, uh, more of a problem if you um, have the top ones without the, 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 the transoms without a heavy profile behind them to, to fix them in their position. 
and they were actually uh, put on a, on a board of uh, wood from which in which uh, grooves were made to fit to try out the right uh, curving and um, twisting of the profiles. Of course, this is an expensive window, but it's it's first, uh, and it shows that it's feasible. So, any improvement is welcome. It has one uh, opening handle to fix five points around the, the window, and it's connecting up to the standard uh, Al Alcoa profile, which is fire and uh, waterproof, etc. So it's possible to uh, make just one special element at a corner, or just uh, um, just a special feature bulging out on the facade, and then make the rest of the facade quite cheap to, to lower the effort cost. And the, the finishing, outside finishing, can be varied, also to a structural glazing. It's uh, suited for many kinds of uh, facades. Here, for example, on the the Al Mutawa Tower, the, the inclination angle of the mullions will vary on both sides of the building. So um, the transoms must have this twist profile. Also, clearly, the B2B tower has a similar problem of a variant connections between uh, transoms and uh, mullions. For shapes like this, it's all um, all can be made with this uh, framing system. I think uh, there will be a big market for just making singular L facade. This is just a try out to show what uh, effects can be made or how it will uh, and will be seen on street level. Or this is just a try out of a twisted uh, building with a highly reflective facade. Um, everything gets rather complex like this. It would be a great pity if one does have this uh, reflection of the surroundings, not to have a perfect surrounding and just to blur it all. Of course, the big game is to make a big building curving, to have the overall lines all right, but the, the reflective glass can have a big added value. These are effects that would uh, happen if two those volumes uh, can be seen together. This was a tower I designed a few years ago with cold bent, aluminium cold bent uh, glass. So everything was produced flat and pushed out of the vertical. A very cheap uh, system. This is another usage, usage of uh, cold glass. Only uh, the, yeah, the, we call it spaghetti uh, windows. A U profile at the top and one at the bottom. And the, the glass panel was pushed in at the top, twisted and pulled down. There was some breakage, but uh, more than normal. But it uh, works. This one we've just seen. Really curved glass. It's quite a normal thing these days, but connecting it to a framing system is a problem. Um, Geary curved the glass on annealed molds. We did it on a uh, very cheap material, just cellular concrete, and that's how we produced uh, the paints. And we cut them to size on milled polystyrene molds. Now we're testing a mold um, which will be much cheaper, as it uh, only has the, the milled uh, metal parts uh, in the length. And then the steel parts, it will, the steel rods, they will sink down. It's a very big simplification of the process. I have high expectations of this because the glass is much too expensive and this is a very cheap system. Tempered glass that we made as a test. Well, and then some technical aspects. Um, most important, how one can minimize the pillowing effect, and uh, that is a problem. I think the main solution is by uh, making the outer pane thicker. That's it.